This tutorial will discuss single, dual, and multi-stage morphs for iClone 6 and before. Single stage morphs are fairly trivial and there is many video tutorials that indicate how to create them. So I will go through them fairly quickly so that we can get on to the dual and multi-stage morphs. For dual stage morphs, there's a trick that can avoid the problems that are encountered when creating multi-stage morphs. Lastly, I will discuss the issues with creating multi-stage morphs. Some quick background. Morphs are created using expressions. So you need to turn your prop into a pseudo character and then using expressions, different morphs can be applied. When creating morphs, you need to start with the base object. This is the object when no morphs are applied. From there, you can edit the mesh of the object to create morphs. Remember when creating morphs, you cannot add or remove points, edges, or faces. The count must remain the same in order for the morph to be applicable. When creating a single stage morph, it doesn't really matter which mesh is the base object and which mesh is the morphed object. To illustrate the single stage morph, I'm going to load a sample object here, just a basic shape. Um, at this point, we can smooth the object if we wanted to. And then we're going to export it into uh, iClone, because in iClone, we need to add the dummy bone to take, uh, turn it into a character, because morphs are applied in iClone 6 and previous by using expressions. So I'm importing the uh, object that we just created. Uh, there it is, not too exciting. Now I'm going to add the dummy bone, which we can do just by uh, dragging it into iClone. Now the dummy bone cylinder is a little big, so I like to resize it a little bit. And now we need to merge this, the uh, object, the morph uh, object with that uh, dummy bone. So we do that by first attaching the two objects together. And then using the merge subprop to make one object out of them. Now that we have the uh, object of the dummy bone, we can take it back into 3D Exchange where we will turn it into a pseudo character. So here we have a couple of options and the option that we want is convert to non-human. That brings up the uh, dummy bone. We select, uh, we select uh, Maya and then we press convert. Now our Morph Prop has been turned into a character which has the ability to add expressions. This is how morphs are applied in iClone 6 and earlier. Now we can use the Add tab to, create, uh, to add the other phase of our uh, morph. So in this case, uh, just a transformation. And now cycling be between the two, you can apply and deapply the morph. So now that we have our morph loaded, we can apply it in iClone using expressions. So we go to the expression editor, make sure that we are on the custom tab, then select one of the slots and directions and set 100 for our morph, so 100%. Lastly, press the set button and we can close our expression editor since we only have one stage. Now we can apply to iClone to see how our transformation works. Back in iClone, as we discussed, we apply the morph using the face puppet. 
on your face puppet, make sure that you are on the 3D exchange uh, slot. And we saved it on slot one. We are going to preview and we can see now by mouse movements, we can apply and deapply our morph. Now that we have demonstrated the simple one-stage morph, we can discuss a two-stage morph. In a two-stage morph, instead of starting the base object as the first stage and then creating a second and third stage, it is easier to make the base object the second stage and create a morph for the first stage and the third stage. The reason for this will become more obvious when we look at the multi-stage morphs. But in short, a morph is always created in reference to the base object. In a two-stage morph, if the middle object is your base object, the first and the third stage are easily made in reference to the middle object. If, on the other hand, the dual stage morph prop was based on the base object being the first stage, you'd have difficulties making the third stage because it needs to refer back to the first stage, not the second stage. Since we've already seen how to make a boned object so that we can add morphs, I'm going to jump straight to 3D Exchange with our boned object already loaded. Note that in this case, it is a boned object of our second stage of the dual stage morph prop uh, to make it easier to apply the other two stages. So here is our cube, which is the second stage of our dual prop up, and now we're going to add the other two stages. So that would be the first stage and the third stage. Now, just like before, we can use the expression editor to map these to an expression that can be retrieved in iClone. Uh, so we open up the editor. Again, we want to be on the custom tab. We can choose any one of the slots. I will just use slot one here and apply 100 for one, uh, one of the morphs and then choose a different uh, mouse movement and apply 100 for the other morph. This will apply 100% of the morph um, when that uh, mouse direction is chosen. To test it, we can uh, move back to um, iClone and see how the morph works. So back in iClone, once again, we activate the morphs using the uh, face puppet. In Face Puppet, you want to make sure that you are selected on the 3D uh, Exchange uh, or 3D Custom uh, slot. And now, by making the appropriate mouse movements, we can apply the different morphs. So we can basically cycle through our three stages exactly as we wanted. That brings us to multi-stage morph props. The problem here is that, as was explained before, morphs are always in reference to the base object. So when making a multi-stage prop, each of the phases has to refer back to the base model, not the previous stage. In essence, when a morph is made, the computer looks at the difference between the base model and the morph to figure out what points have changed. It records these points as changes and when the morph is applied, it applies those changes. That means, for example, if your fourth stage was based on changes from your third stage and both those morphs are applied, the changes for stage three will actually be applied twice because they'll be applied from the stage three changes and also the stage four changes. This, of course, is typically not desirable. Let me demonstrate. For this example, I have created four shapes. Using what we learned about dual uh, stage morph props, we're going to make our second stage the reference object. This way, stages one and three can easily refer back to stage two, which is not a problem. The problem comes with stage four. Stage four needs to refer back to stage two, 
and not stage 3. However, in our case, the stage 4 mesh actually has the changes both for stage 3 and stage 4 because stage 4 was built on stage 3. Now let's see what happens. Okay, so here we have our cube again. This is the second stage of our uh, multi-stage morph prop. And now we're going to add the other stages. Stage 1, stage 3, just like our dual prop. And now we're going to add the stage 4. Uh, similar as before, we are going to then apply these two expressions so that we can apply them in iClone. Using the expression bar, um, we want to make sure once again that we're on the custom tab. And we're going to apply 100% uh, for each uh, uh, morph, uh, choosing a different mouse direction each time so that we can apply, uh, apply them individually. Back in iClone, we have our object. Once again, we're going to go to the face puppet to apply our morphs. Uh, make sure you're on the 3D uh, custom change slot one. And now we can go through our morphs. All might look okay, but the observant user would see that it is not. When we applied the fourth stage, it should have just shifted the side points out as we wanted, but it didn't. It not only shifted them out, it also elongated the object even more. This is because stage 4 contains both the changes for stage 3 and the changes for stage 4. In order to create the morph in stage 4 that we expect, we would have to make stage 4 morph reference back to the stage 2 original object. This means a morph whose points come out to the side but do not elongate. This way, when stage 3 and stage 4 are applied, they will get the right result. And this concept of always having to go back to the reference object is what makes multi-stage props difficult to create because you always need to create the next stage based on the original object, so you have to subtract out your previous stages. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and good luck with those multi-stage props.